Hello, my name is Greg Cooper and I'm an assistant professor of photojournalism in the School of Communication and Journalism here at Eastern Illinois University. I've had many influential teachers in my life, uh, even starting with Mr. Hanks, my fifth grade teacher uh, way back in elementary school who certainly taught me humility, kept me out of trouble. But I would say the greatest influences would occur when I started going on to college, including Robert Fogata, who was one of my first photography teachers who taught me about passion. Uh, Horace Bristol, who was a mentor uh, shortly thereafter, who taught me about the sincerity of photojournalism and how to make a difference and many others, but I, th I think probably what mostly comes to mind is David LaBelle, who was one of my professors from Western Kentucky University. And of all the things that I learned from that man, I would say that he taught me compassion more than anything. The importance of uh, telling the, the story of the human nature and how we relate to each other and the importance of not only uh, covering our community but us also the importance of our own family and how we connect to human beings. And I'm grateful to say that even today uh, David LaBelle remains a tremendous uh, influence and mentor to me and I'm very happy to be able to just call him a friend, the kind of person that I can call up on any day and ask him a question and vice versa. He can, uh, could call me and just talk about his family or he might have a question for me. So I would have to say that uh, David LaBelle. In my Let's see, nearly 20 years in teaching, I've had a lot of courses that I've really enjoyed. Uh, probably one of the funnest ones I taught was at my previous school. Uh, uh, it was a color photography class that I really approached as in light and color. And I told the students that it's not a photography class per se, it's a class about how to learn about light and color, but you're going to be using a camera. But in my field, the class that I probably enjoy the most is JOU 3001. Here on campus, it's uh, known as Photojournalism or Photojournalism 1. And it's an exciting course. It comes from my background as a daily newspaper photographer, which was a profession I had before I became a teacher. I think it really covers the foundations of being able to go out and cover your community in a way like a newspaper photographer would capture moments in candid ways, to be able to relate to members of your community, be able to talk to them, have dialogue with them, and to uh, make meaningful moments that are appropriate and uh, you know exciting for the audience, whomever it might be to consume, be it for a newspaper or for any outlet that appreciates nonfiction visual storytelling. So PR or marketing, newspapers, television, websites, anything that appreciates those candid moments of community-oriented to photographs. Being a teacher has been one of the most rewarding careers I've had in my life. It's always been about uh, visual storytelling, either as a photographer, as a picture editor, but now as a teacher. And uh, I, I tell you, it's one of those kinds of jobs that I would, I would pay to do, although I probably shouldn't admit that to my boss. Uh, I just love the concept of being able to give back, but of course it's not just all, you know, sunshine and rainbows in the classroom. There's always going to be challenges and I'm, I'm finding that at least more as of late that being able to relate to my students uh, is becoming more and more challenging. I think part of it is just, a, uh, just an age difference. Um, there's 30 years difference between me and most of my students and it's harder for me to get the cultural references or to to bring levity to my classrooms by talking about you know current events outside of say news more of the cultural side or fashion side or entertainment side uh, so that's been kind of challenging but on the other hand I, I played up in class I'm like you know so what are you kids talking about nowadays what's popular on TikTok or whatever the social media of the week is and we often have a dialogue and I, I think that helps the students connect more with me and me with them so that when it comes time to talk about the meaningful conversation that we need to have for the class for that day, there's, there's a greater connection and, a, and, a, and a more of an engagement. Uh, it's an opportunity to have a conversation that's back and forth as opposed to me just being up there presenting information in the classroom. So activities and hobbies, this is, that's a really great question because if I think about what my hobbies are, I would go back to say photography, which is true. I I'm, don't practice photography as a profession anymore. I teach it, but I still love to shoot pictures. 
but that's boring. Let's talk about something that's less, a little less boring, and I would also defer to uh, a very wise faculty member here on campus, Dr. Michael Gillespie, who has an Instagram feed that just amazes me every day, and that is his baking. I, too, have taken up baking. This is before my EIU time, but it's nice to know that there are other individuals who enjoy the craft of pulling up a recipe or coming up with in your own and bringing the ingredients together and creating a composition that, that really you know, resonates. And, and for me, it's been more about the desserts. And unfortunately, my body shows <laughs> of the COVID pounds that I've picked up since I started baking in the last 12 months. But I think probably the coolest thing that I've gotten out of learning to create stuff in the kitchen is I often bring it to my class. And this directly relates to the question about how I feel that I'm less likely to engage with my students. But if I bring them a plate of cookies that are warm right out of the oven, that certainly works. So baking it would be the first thing. The second thing would be uh, woodworking. And that is brand new to me. I uh, now live in a house here in Charleston that has a garage. So bringing out some tools or buying tools at Home Depot to create things like picture frames or just knickknacks that are made of wood has been really exciting and actually very therapeutic for me during the downtimes. Wow, a bucket list. That's something that perhaps all of us should be thinking about, you know, our entire existence. Uh, you know, and, and this is a really great question. I, I don't have a bucket list per se, literal bucket list, but there are certainly some things in my life that I want to accomplish given the opportunity and preferably with my family in tow. And I think right off the top of that list is to go to Norway. This is really strange. It's kind of random in my mind, but uh, a couple years ago, I watched a, a TV show on Netflix called Vikings. I don't know, I was just bored, and uh, the Vikings, I didn't realize it, came from Norway or the Norway region. And so I thought, yeah, that's kind of fun, that's kind of cute. So doing some quick research and looking at pictures and, and such, uh, the country just seems absolutely stunning, just completely beautiful. And I thought, you know what, I, I think I'd like to travel to that particular country and, and put that on my bucket list. So that is, that is certainly something that I would really like to do. Another one is also travel related, but it's also related to something I saw recently on TV. Uh, there was a show, uh, it was a documentary called, I think it was called 14 Peaks, about um, a, a mountain climber who climbed all 14 peaks that are 8,000 uh, meters and above in one season. And of course, one of those is Everest, and they showed footage from the Everest base camp. And I thought, wow, that's kind of beautiful, that's kind of exciting. I have no inclination at all to climb any mountains, but to see Everest from the base camp would be pretty cool too. So that would be number two. Number three, I think would be just to continue to, and this is gonna sound so trite, but I just wanna to continue to make a difference for my students and my family and this community. And it's not really so much a bucket list, but you know, I don't know, I, I have this tremendous need to go out and meet as many new people as I possibly can here in Coles County to not only just benefit me as an individual, but also to give back to my community and to make it better for my students. I, this is something that I, that I mention to my students all the time. Go out in your community, talk to people, and I can't ask them to do something that I'm not actually doing myself. So once a week, or maybe more often, I go and I meet somebody new. Now that's a little less you know, literal on a bucket list, but that's just one of my personal goals that I really enjoy and, and uh, go out and achieve on a, on a weekly basis. So I'd, I'd like to close this opportunity with just saying thank you to the EIU community. Uh, moving from California here to Charleston, Illinois, which was honestly a town I'd never even heard of, I had to look up on a map when I first applied for the position, was a, it, was, it was a big risk for me and my family, but I have to admit that it was the greatest decision I made, and I can't tell you how grateful I am to the entire EIU community and to Charleston and Coles County at large for how welcome they've made me feel, me and my family um, and the students. Frankly, it, this has been an incredible opportunity to teach here and I look forward to teaching at EIU for many years to come.